Sanji and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today we're looking at Gizmos, a two to four player competitive tableau building game because you're going to be building your tableau right in front of you with face up cards. And it's also an engine builder, which means that it's slow and steady at the start, but then the more and more gizmos you build, the more wonderful, fantastical things are going to happen when you do your thing. So there's a great science fair upcoming, and you as a madcap inventor is tasked with building the most unbelievable gizmos to bring to the fair in order to take home the spoils. So let's see how this plays and whether this could be the next game for you. So this is what the game will look like, at least from one player's perspective. We're each going to start with this sort of player reference board here that will highlight each of the four actions you can take on your turn. It will give you a small pricey on what you do when you choose those actions. Each player will also start with this file card. And then there's this communal marketplace of gizmo cards, starting with tier one all the way up to tier three. There's always four of the tier ones, three of the two, tier twos, and two of the tier threes available and up for grabs. So as you'd expect, these tier one gizmos will cost less, but will also give you a smaller benefit. And then when we get up to the tier three cards, they're gonna cost you more, but ultimately give you more benefits and more points at the end of the game. You've also got to fashion this energy dispenser here, and there are always six energy available and for you to pick individually and specifically from. So in your turn, you're going to be taking an action, then passing to the player to your left. So starting from left to right, the first action you can take is to file, and that will allow you to simply take one of the face-up gizmos in the communal area and place it in your archive to the right of your player board. So you are effectively reserving that gizmo so that no one else can build it. You can then pick, and this will allow you to take one of the six energy that's always, always can be found in this part of the dispenser here and place it in your energy reserve. You can build, and building is the primary means that you're going to be gaining points by the end of the game. So you can build any gizmo that you can see face up in that communal area or one that you've previously archived. And to build, you're going to need a number and colour of resources that can be found in the bottom left-hand corner of these cards. And then finally, you can research. And that allows you to do a similar thing as building and filing in that you pick one of these face-down decks, draw a certain number of cards equal to your research limit that can be found here in the upgrade part of your player board, and then either build or archive one of those cards, placing the remainder back in the bottom of the deck. So what cards are we looking to build? Well, there's you can see a bunch of iconography at the top of all of these gizmos, and this is gonna denote all of the actions you're gonna be taking, and also where gizmos are placed when they're built. So in the top left hand corner shows which area of their player board they're placed. So here these spanners will go in the build column here. The, the picks will go in, in that respective column and so on. You'll also have these sort of passive gizmos that will give you passive upgrades or allow you to convert energy to different types, that sort of thing. And they'll be placed in their respective columns as well. So the idea with any engine builder like this is that you synergize with the cards that you're playing in your engine because there is a fairly exhaustive lift of what all of these icons do. You know, some have an effect when you pick a certain energy type like this card here. Once you pick a yellow energy from the dispenser, it allows you to randomly pick from the top of the dispenser here. This one says anytime you build a red gizmo, you'll also get to pick an energy. So the more you do this, the more chain reactions happen. So you can literally find yourself picking a yellow and then another gizmo in your tableau will allow you to then do something else with that. And when you do that, you then get another benefit. So the idea is that you synergize as well as you can so that all of the actions or as many of them that you can take as possible will gain you those chain reactions and gain those means for you to get more points. So you're going to rinse and repeat this process until either one player has got 16 built gizmos including their starting one or has built three tier three gizmos 
and then when everyone has had an equal number of turns you'll then just add up all of the scores you've got see some gizmos will allow you to get points as you play like these and but the bulk of your points are going to come from the point values of all of the gizmos that you built in your tableau and those point values can be found in the top right hand corner there so that's how this game plays what did i think of it So who is this for? Well it's a light to medium weight game and that's where most gateway games fall. But this isn't a gateway game primarily because of its iconography which does take a little bit longer uh, to learn. You're going to be referring to the rules more than you'd like. It has an accessible theme and it's got the right amount of complexity to be a gateway title. So perhaps you've got a marble collection that you just want to add to and these marbles are too hard to resist. And as an added bonus, you're going to get a great ball game to wrap those marbles around. So you might want to consider this if you like Century Spice Road, published by Plan B Games. Or Wingspan, published by Stonemaier Games. So the former doles down a little bit of the complexity on offer here and is really quite a straightforward game that has many similarities to this. And the latter is on a similar complexity curve, but it's on the very opposite side of the world in terms of theme. So in terms of gameplay, well, this is a game with a really intriguing premise that they brought to life with a great deal of uh, attention to detail and, and the intention of bringing joy to the player. And they largely do that because the theme works with what you're trying to do here. And each action of the four that you can do feel different. They feel like they're, they're giving you a way to navigate how you want to build that engine and ultimately gain the most points at the end of the game. So you starting with the file in, invariably means you're going to be archiving to get some uh, to get some energy to start with. But then the sky's the limit, really. The gizmos that are on offer are going to tell a story of how you want to play the game, and that's presented and done very well. You know whether you're picking, you're building, you're researching. All of these things come with their own pros and cons, and own speed at which you're going to build that engine. So that core. Tenet of the game works very, very well. The way the escalation of the tiers works, so tier one, two, and three, and the way they tie into the end game, be it you get three, uh, tier three gizmos, or ultimately get 16 in, in your tableau. The way they escalate, and the way you've got to do a point grab towards the end, all the while synergizing with all the chain reactions and the combos that you're gonna build into your tableau as you go. So it's a pretty fast paced game initially, but then you've really got to start to think, how do all of my gizmos synergize with each other to give me the most energy, to give me the most means to get the most points come the end of the game. So the fact that they've added the little upgrades on there, the converters on there as well, just rounds out the whole package mechanically. So you've got a really tight design and execution of game here. So the only probably drawback to it is its iconography. It does take a little bit to get used to it. Learning the game, getting it to the table is no problem at all, but you're gonna be referring to that iconography reference sheet more than you'd like. And that's even after a multiple playthroughs. Some of the icons are just not as intuitive as you'd like. I've seen this done a lot better in other games where it all makes sense just at a glance what a card does. But overall, we've got a wonderful gameplay package and I really appreciate all the nuances in the overall experience on offer here. In terms of the look and feel and theme of the game, well, everything's of a high standard. This is an attractive product. You look at the box and it's going to grab your attention. And when you're inside, the artwork on the gizmos, if you take time to look at them, is entertaining. It's not necessarily parlayed into the theme of the cards and what you're doing. And themes, not much deeper than that surface level. But everything's of a tidy standard. One drawback, the device to dispense the energy isn't perfect, it's temperamental, but quite honestly, whenever a ball game, or even a toy for that matter, has this type of device, there's always going to be those drawbacks. So with all that being said, Dice vs Cards going to give a final score of 8 out of 10. This is an engine builder I see, see staying in my collection for quite some time. So that's it from me, I'll see you next time. Where the actual was the gizmo that when you poured water on it, it spawned gremlins. 
missed opportunity.